Welcome Year H to this little tutorial on getting set up with our HTML and CSS unit. Now our normal unit that we do in class involves creating files which you store in your My Work folder and then run in the web browser. Nice and simple, you can create the pages, load in images and create your own website. We've obviously got a slight problem with that this year in the sense that people are using all sorts of different devices. So some students have PCs at home that they can create files on and work in the same way as they would in class. Other students are working on tablets or other portable devices, even mobile phones, that don't give you the same opportunity to have files stored as you would on a normal PC. So we've worked hard to try and find an online version of that that means that you can create your website, import resources, but on the web. And what we've done is we've created a template which contains the same information that you would have used in class normally from our OneNote that's pre-set up for you. And I'll come back to this OneNote help information at the end to show you a few examples of how you can do things like, for example, adding an image to a web page. Right, so the first thing we want to do is to go to a site called GitHub. So what you're looking for is github.com, okay? And on the front page of GitHub, you will notice a sign up page. And what you should do is put a username in uh, that hopefully will be different from other people. Uh, that can be anything. Um, your school email address we recommend just so that you don't get additional spam emails on your personal account, but it doesn't really matter if you use your personal account here and a password. And be, because there's only one box for the password here, be really sure to make sure that the password there is one that you remember. Okay, so I'm just using a temporary account that will disappear in a few hours time um, as a account for my uh, sign up just for this demonstration purposes. Right, so once you get the email, click the little box in the middle of the uh, verify email address button and that should confirm your GitHub account. Now Sandbox should automatically take you to this screen to allow GitHub and Code Sandbox to talk together. You may have to log in using GitHub. Because I have the window open already, it now just asks me to connect the two together. So now we have Code Sandbox logged in using my GitHub account. So that's stage one. The second stage is to try and open the template. When you first reach Code Sandbox, you get your recent sandboxes, which is currently empty. There's a template section down the side and there's a bin section. So if you do delete um, a project, you can get it back nice and easily. Now Create Sandbox will create an entirely blank website, but we recommend not using that until you get experienced. Instead, you want to use the template, which you should have been provided. Okay, and that should load up with NKS year eight template at the top. Now just to show you around a little bit so you can see how this works. You have the title of the sandbox here at the top. You have a list of the files. So this sandbox is made up of a web page called index, a second web page called page two, and a style sheet called styles.css. You can completely ignore package.json, okay? That's not needed for this project, but leave it there. The code panel, in this section shows you the HTML code and you can actually see very clearly that this matches up with the right hand side which is a preview of the web page so a kind of mini web browser. I can click on any of the pages on this side and it will load that page into this panel. Now we're currently looking at the template so the most important thing is to create your own copy of the template to copy it so that you can start to make a change and you can do that using this fork button here at the top. The fork analogy with the different prongs means that you're creating a different version of the template which you can then change. So pressing the fork button produces a new version of this sandbox with some random characters in it, which is now in your project folder. So my sandboxes slash. And if you click on the name just once, you can then edit that title. That now means that's part of your projects. You pop over to the right hand side to the little three dots menu here and click on dashboard, you'll see that I now have Mr. Gowan's website. Double click on that takes me back to my version of the sandbox. 
Now, from here on in, it's all about HTML. It's all about exploring how these little tags make up the page. One of the most important things, of course, is to see the link between the style sheet and the pages themselves. This style sheet, for example, is using a title section and anything inside these, these tags here will be considered a title. If I go to the style sheet, you'll see the description of title. So if you see this background color here, which is pure white, if I hover over, I can then move up and select an alternative color for the background of that title. And you'll notice that the web page immediately previews. So I can see immediate changes. Font size, for example, size 80. Let's see how big that is. And you'll notice that the page changes immediately. So this gives you a single self-contained place where you can play around with the changes to the code. For example, adding a picture. Now in our OneNote HTML and CSS help page, which you should have available to you in your OneNote, you'll notice that we have sections on things like adding images and adding links. Now I've already created a link on this page over here, click here, which is surrounded by a link tag, which takes us to page two.html. So it's a description of which page to load up next. This link, for example, could be an entire web page link. So I could copy this link, paste it underneath, and change the text to, and this is the BBC News website. And change the link to the web address for the BBC News website, which could of course be copied from a web browser. And when I click on that link, it will actually load the BBC website. Say I want to add an image into my website. I can just click on the image on the web, save a copy of the image, so save image. And it's a good idea to give the image a name that you're gonna recognize. For me to use that image, I will need to add that into my list of files. So I'll press the up arrow, which is upload files, and I'll find the file that I want to upload. And I can add that image into my website down here. I can take the image code from the OneNote page and put that directly into my index page, then change the name of the picture. At the moment, you'll notice it can't find to the exact name of the image that I've uploaded. So BBC News image JPEG should now be visible. Now notice I've got a height of 300 and a width of 250. If you have both of these, it will fix the image to that particular size. And notice that makes this image appear slightly squished. If I remove the height, so I imagine I'm only really worried about the width, I can remove the height and that will automatically place, make the image that particular width, but it will make the height automatic. Notice also one little handy hint is that this little tag here, BR, okay, is a line break. This allows you to go on to the next line. So in this particular page, I would probably want to have a line break at the end of this link here, possibly an extra one, which will give me two line breaks. And then after the BBC News image, another couple of line breaks before the link. And that's how you can kind of space the page out. Part of what you're doing year eight is about using this to play around with creating web pages, to explore the different tools and tags that you can use. So use the resources that we provided to you. And also this fantastic website here, w3schools.com, which gives you lots and lots of little examples of code that you can try out, exploring the different attributes that you can work on, things like colors, adding tables, different ways of formatting pages. There's a huge amount of information here. So the idea of this unit is to explore and play for a few weeks and then to start to build up your own little mini website, a website containing a couple of pages linked together. And I'll be sharing an example website in a little while to show you and inspire you on the kind of things you can produce. So for the time being, get yourself logged in, get yourself signed up, get a copy of the template and start to explore and have a little bit of a play.